Hello. First tonight, another furious protest on the streets of Luton. On one side, a group of angry young men. On the other, a conservative shadow minister. Baroness Saida Vazi is the Tory spokesperson for Community Cohesion. Andrew Sinclair was following a walkabout in Berry Park when the eggs started to fly. He's in Luton now. Andrew. Stuart Saida Wazi was recently named as one of the most influential Muslim women in Britain. She's a lawyer, she's involved in a charity that promotes women's rights in Pakistan, and she's highly regarded by David Cameron, which is why she was made Shadow Minister for Social Cohesion. But being a successful Muslim woman has made her a few enemies, as she found out again this evening. This was an important visit for the Conservative Party in Luton. A senior shadow minister with a great deal of knowledge about social and racial issues in a town where tensions do come to the fore every now and again. And they came to the fore this evening. Baroness Wasi was confronted by a group of men. Eggs were thrown. Her mind has tried to move her away, but she wanted to confront them. You know what? Islam teaches, you know the Prophet Muhammad. How much have you told us? Are you going to tell us about it? You tell us about it. Your conduct, sir. We don't sell our religion. on you. We haven't sold our religion like that. You have the audacity to come and tell us about it. And let me get to this. We need to shame on you not to follow. How dare you have audacity? About a dozen or so men were involved in the protest. They believed to be members of the same group that disrupted a Royal Anglian homecoming parade earlier this year. We're just uh, against everything she stands for. She don't represent Islam, she don't represent the Muslims and we just find it very offensive that she's come all the way down here to a Muslim area trying to re say that she represents our views trying to re represent the Muslims. She, she clearly doesn't. She's against Sharia she doesn't implement the Quran, neither the traditions of the Prophet. She's uh, in uh, support of our Muslims dying in Afghanistan and Iraq. So how is it that she's representing us? She's and a she, practicing she, Muslim. She's not she? a practicing Muslim Muslim. Obviously, she says she's a practicing Muslim, but we have Islam for us to define what a practicing Muslim is. And clearly, by looking at her, she does not represent Islam or the Muslims. And is it right to throw eggs at her? I don't know. No one from us lot threw eggs at her. We were here just to have a, to confront her to see what her views were. We don't know who threw the eggs. Obviously, okay. those people they obviously should be accounted for what they did. Eventually, Baroness Wasi was taken into a sari shop to clean up. Actually, I think that was very interesting for you to see. Because what you saw there actually was a direct um, conflict between uh, the real British Muslims, which are these guys that are walking around with me, and you saw people who are actually bringing the faith of Islam into huge disrepute. To disrepute, yeah. And, and it's these people who bring their faith into disrepute, much like Nick Griffin brings his faith and his community into disrepute, that Britain needs to be very clear about uh, because these people all they want to do is preach hate and divide societies and we have them unfortunately in all cultures and in all religions she insisted her walkabout should continue although this time the police stayed nearby and a short while ago baroness wazi made it back to the conservative club here in luton and she's with me now uh, your reaction to what happened out there well, um, it's been an interesting day, to, to say the least. Um, you know, we, uh, what I was saying earlier was that the very values um, that these people wish to use, the values of freedom of speech, freedom of protest, freedom of expression, are the very values, actually, they also disagree with. And what, I, what, what has come out of today, what's been so interesting, is that the good people of Luton, whatever colour, whatever faith, whatever religion, have all stood together and said these people do not speak for Luton. But it's also been wider than that. I've had so many text messages on my phone phone because clearly the BBC have been reporting it from across the country saying these people do not represent British Muslims, they do not speak in our name. So what do you do about small groups of people like this who do bring the Muslim faith and the Muslim religion into such bad disrepute? I mean, the sad reality is that there will always be groups and individuals in, in all faiths who will always bring their faith and their communities into disrepute. For many, many years, British Muslims like me have been saying that the likes of Omar Bakri and Abu Hamza and others who preach extremism should not be allowed on our streets to poison the minds of, of young people. And there is legislation which can be used to ensure that that does not happen. So the government needs to use this legislation more? Well, 
Well, the, first of all, the government needs to use the legislation that it has, but it also needs to have a very clear policy about where it's going. You know, we've seen instances where the government have been talking about preventing violent extremism, and yet the very projects that they have been funding um, do not actually deal with the issues of extremism. We've also had uh, issues about very serious cultural and religious issues which need to be tackled, but the government have chosen not to do so in the interests of cultural sensitivity. I think the government's understanding of their own policies is flawed. OK, Baroness Wazi, thank you very much. There is still a small group of protesters just down the road from here, but the police are there, and everyone's hoping the rest of the evening passes without incident. Andrew, thank you very much. The first TA soldier from this region to die in Afghanistan was buried in Cambridgeshire today. 400 mourners were in Oakington for the funeral of rifleman Andrew Fentiman. The role of the volunteer soldiers is becoming more and more important. Alex Dunlop is in Afghanistan. Alex. Hello there, Stuart. Well, I'm at Kandahar Air Base uh, in southern Afghanistan, where this is the place where most of the British troops step off the plane and then go into the theatre of war. Of the 500 British reservists here, more than a fifth are from our region. Uh, among them, RAF auxiliaries, uh, medics, and of course, the Territorial Army. And don't think for a moment that these are just backroom boys and girls. The death of uh, Andrew Fentiman has, of course, highlighted the fact uh, that uh, these TAs are right up there. They're on the front line facing the same dangers as regular soldiers. John Mapp has this report. Rifleman Andrew Fentiman volunteered for Afghanistan because he wanted to become an officer. Today, in death, he was treated like one. Full military honours for a man who was part soldier, part salesman. His mother, brother and sister all wore poppies. There, Andrew, now one of the fallen. His coffin was carried by the men he fought alongside. How do you hold back the tears when you must carry one of your own? Just a month after volunteering for Afghanistan, during a routine foot patrol in Helmand, Andrew Fentiman was shot dead. That he chose as a territorial to go uh, is the mark of all our territorials. Um, they want to go out, they want to do their bit for their country, uh, they want to do their bit for their regiment, and also they want to do their bit for the people of Afghanistan. Shortly after arriving in Afghanistan, rifleman Andrew Fentiman wrote on his blog that his unit was still waiting for new body armour and helmets promised to them. He never received them. But the Ministry of Defence insists that new body armour was merely less bulky and would not have offered him better protection from the bullet that killed him. 300 mourners attended the service, many more listened outside from all walks of life, sales reps and soldiers side by side. And in a private burial on St Andrew's Day at St Andrew's Church, Andrew Fentiman was laid to rest. Joel Mapp, BBC Look East, Oakington. Well, having spoken to a reservist officer out here, I know that they will be taking time out today to reflect on the death of Andrew Fentiman. Well, the biggest TA presence from our region by far here are the 3rd Battalion Royal Anglians, the Steelbacks. They've got 65 men. Uh, in Afghanistan. Half are over in Mosakala in Helmand province. The other half are in Kabul as part of force protection. And I spent the weekend with them. At home, Robert Cox is a groundsman. In Kabul, he's a soldier. On his third day here, a suicide car bomb exploded nearby. Went off at the front gate, which was, uh, was certainly quite a hairy moment. Uh, so Did you go off? Yes, it was very close. It was only about 100 metres away from it. Gun culture starts here at an early age. For Delta Platoon, everything is a potential threat. Insurgents have suicide bombs in cars, on donkeys. They even use children. Suddenly, there's gunfire. There's uh, shots fired in the northerly direction over there. And we're just uh, putting in a shot report and uh, reporting it back up the chain to see what's going on. We soon reach Swimming Pool Hill. The pool was built by the Russians. Well, I think the swimming pool really has to be one of the more gruesome reminders of the Taliban regime. Those that were out of favour would uh, either be tied up, blindfolded and thrown from the top diving board, or else you'd be uh, lined up against the wall here and shot. You can see, actually, some of the bullet holes are still very clearly visible. Do they generally like you being here or not? In the beginning, it takes a bit of getting used to ISAF troops being here. But uh, after a few patrols out on the ground, they're, they're sort of quite willing to uh, come talk to us and uh, they're generally quite friendly. This is as close as Robert's parents get to their son. Emails and an occasional phone call. Family friends don't really know what he's doing in Kabul. 
and one of them was adamant that the TA didn't go out there. I said, I can assure you they do. I said, my, my son's out there, amongst several others. He said, well, I thought the TA would just be doing the duties that the full-time soldiers did in the UK. I said, not in your life. Eric Cox uh, ending my report there. Well, the government uh, says that there is a clear strategy in Afghanistan. Only last week, the Foreign Secretary, David Miliband, told NATO, and I quote, that we will succeed in Afghanistan only when our military resources and development assistance are aligned behind a clear military strategy. And that really means that TAs like the Anglians will have a bigger role out here. A recent government review on reservists says that their contribution to operations in Afghanistan will grow. Back to you. Alex, thank you very much indeed.